So guys, this is a continuation on our rebreather series. Uh, we introduced the AP Inspiration to you on the previous episode. Today, we're going to take a tour of this machine and find out what's hidden behind this yellow casing. Welcome to Everything Scuba. So previous episode, we talked about rebreather diving, how it's different from open circuit diving, what are the benefits, what are the dangers, and the misconceptions associated with rebreather diving. On this episode, we're going to take a tour uh, of this machine, show you how it works, and instructor Nevin will talk all about it. So let's get to it. So Mark, I'm going to stand behind the camera uh, while you give us a, a little tour. So introduce us to the different components of the rebreather here, and uh, we'll walk our way through it. Okay. okay. Yep. So to start off, we've got our handset. This is giving us a real-time reading of our three oxygen sensors. Uh, which is monitoring the uh, content of oxygen inside the loop. The loop is actually all of the convoluted hoses and the counter lungs, which are the bags that we breathe in and out of. Uh, in particular, these are the back-mounted counter lungs, so they actually sit behind the diver. We were talking before about um, possible failures and stuff like that. Uh, we have the ability to go to open circuit without taking the mouthpiece out of our mouth. So we've got open circuit and closed circuit with a toggle. And so you have uh, the ability in this system, uh, if you went to open circuit, if you have air as your diluent, which we'll show you that bottle in a bit, mm -hmm. um, you're, you're breathing off of the diluent bottle. Exactly. Uh, but at depth, um, I have a, say, 30 or, or 40 cubic foot uh, accessory uh, stage bottle hanging from my side, side mounted. And you can also connect into that and the rebreather will draw from that without actually removing it, correct? Yep, so we can connect into our offboard using our gas connection system and run the rebreather offboard. Um, speaking about diluent, uh, we have an automatic diluent valve, which is a glorified second stage regulator uh, with a diaphragm, so that way you can uh, dive the rebreather without manually adding oxygen, which we are, uh, sorry, diluent, that we can always do using the diluent button. We can do that using the automatic diluent valve. And so one of the things we did this week, you had, it, had me do it quite a lot, where we, we, you can see here there's a toggle, and we can turn on our ADV, or automatic diluent valve, or turn it off. And so uh, we would leave that off. And so as you're descending, one of the odd things about diving a rebreather is the fact that as the uh, counter lungs get compressed, you can't take a breath. Exactly. So you have to use your diluent valve to add gas to allow you to take a breath. Yep. So very different from an open circuit. Yep. The automatic diluent valve is uh, pretty much a hands-free option um, if we've got our camera or we've got other uh, pieces of equipment that we're taking diving. Uh, to start our descent, we'll leave that on so that way we're getting a breath whenever we're uh, getting our counter lungs to reduce in volume. And uh, on the opposite side, we can also add some pure oxygen, pure oxygen. into the system as well. Uh, and that allows us to alter our PO2 at varying depths mm -hmm. if we wanted to manually do that. Exactly. Okay. So that's kind of a, a quick review of the front side. Let's take a look at the inner workings. This was kind of intimidating to me at first uh, when you look inside of here and... Uh, see uh, what there is but and, and also surprisingly tiny little bottles of gas yes okay so first we've got our oxygen bottle that allows us to replenish the uh, oxygen that we metabolize during our dive um, through our solenoid which is actually connected right up there uh, so those three sensors that are um, monitoring our po2 are also talking with the electronics which are in the lid um, we've got our diluent which we use to get to depth. Um, we're pretty much diluting the oxygen on the way down as our counter lungs are decreasing in volume. And this year, uh, this week, we used air as mm -hmm. a new rebreather diver, but you have options for other breathable gases uh, for if you're diving at depth, uh, you, you can put heliox, trimix, a variety of different gases. Exactly, so uh, most of the time we'll use air um, shallower than 130 feet. 
anytime we're diving deeper than 130 feet, we'll typically have uh, some sort of trimix in there okay. uh, to reduce the narcotic factor. Talk to me a little bit about the redundancies in here. That's, that was another thing that was impressive to me uh, in terms of the, the systems and the backups to the backups to the backups. Exactly. Uh, so as we talked about before, we ultimately have finishing off the dive on closed circuit, which is ideal in all types of uh, closed circuit diving or even any diving. We want to finish on what we start with. Um, but if we can't either add oxygen or add diluent, um, whether we forgot to fill uh, or had a catastrophic issue with any of the low pressure hoses, um, we would then be able to either plug in off board um, and fly what we call semi-closed rebreather, which is open circuit, but we're utilizing the scrubber material to extend the amount of gas that we have. Two, two batteries. Two batteries. We've got two controllers. Uh, so there are two controllers in the lid. Uh, each of our controllers uh, are able to run the solenoid. Um, we have our handset and then also a heads up display, which is two LED lights. Right there. Attached with a fiber optic cable. So even if you completely cut the fiber optic cable, it would not flood the electronics because they are just LED lights at the top of the lid. Uh, those are giving us real-time tracking of our PO2. Our uh, handset is the primary display. We also have an audible alarm. That alarm goes off when it's either too high oxygen, too low oxygen, or any other num number of uh, potential uh, things that could go sideways with the rebreather. Right. And for example, this week we had a, a one, one oxygen cell that wasn't behaving quite uh, the way the other two were. And so we, we ended up having some cell warnings. And that was a good learning experience as well to show yep. that, uh, yes, you continue to function even though one cell is not doing exactly what you expected. Exactly. And with the controllers, uh, those are in a master-slave relationship. So controller yes. one is master. Controller two is constantly watching uh, controller one. And if it feels like it's not doing quite what it should, it will take over control of the system. Correct? Exactly. Yeah. And then ultimately we are able to shut controller one down and make controller two the master. Perfect. Um, so we've got the redundancy in that. Right. So guys, now we know the components and the anatomy of the AP Inspiration rebreather. But before we take this thing underwater, one of the requirements to even take this course is you need to be nitrox or enriched air certified. And so on our next episode, we are going to discuss the theoretical knowledge that you need to know about nitrox and diving safely using that gas. So click the link down below. If you missed our previous episodes on rebreather diving, click the link right to the right side of my hat. See you then.